The BBC presents My Music. A musical panel game devised by Edward J. Mason and Tony Schreier. And here's Steve Race to introduce the team. Hello again. By now you must know our contestants, Frank Muir and David Franklin versus Dennis Norden and Ian Wallace. <laughs> In this first round, gentlemen, each tune has something to do with a colour, like green eyes or a brown bird singing, but not them. Just the title, please, for two marks. And we begin, as always, with David Franklin. Blues in the night, two marks. <laughs> Thank you. Right, as you so, as you so <laughs> rightly say, David. Blues in the night, two marks. The colour there being blue. Well, it, could, it could be oh. dun coloured <laughs> from the my first mother, line. My dun. mother dun told me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's another two marks. <laughs> it isn't, but who's counting? Dennis, your colour coming up. Encouraging when the, this first round, which is generally devoted to these orchestral pieces, which yeah. I flounder at. This is yellow, but it's lovely watching the audience all digging each other. <laughs> they know they're giving each other bruises. It's called Yellow Bird up there in the something tree. Yeah, banana tree, actually. Yes. yes. Yellow Bird is right for plantains. Mm -hmm. It's a bot botanical name. Mm -hmm. Ian Wallace, for, for you, a couleur. So reminiscent of that pipe music you were here uh, in, in the bar in Tossa del Mar <coughs> or some such place or even in the Kings Road, Chelsea. I'm just stalling so that my companion oh, can write yeah. the colour down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, I thought you had that one off. Uh, Rose. Yes, because the title is... You've <laughs> obviously never been to Tossa del Mar either. We <laughs> <laughs> are. Oh, la, oh, yes, La Vion. Uh, the yes. Vion. Oh, Rose, yes. Rather than the Van Ordinaire. As you say, a great, great, <laughs> yes, great favourite of what I like to call musical wallpaper. Mm. That's what that stuff is. Two marks there and a colour for Frank Mill. Ribbons in her ear is the name of the song. So scarlet is the colour. That's it for two marks. And on to the next round. General musical knowledge for two marks again. David Franklin, what are choke symbols? Can't be the little picture on the button on your dashboard. <laughs> <laughs> it's to do with written music. Uh, no, I, I think I must tell you that you're thinking of the wrong kind of symbol. Oh, I beg your pardon, I was spelling it wrong. Yes, but my, I see. Uh, my great advantage is I can spell symbols two ways. <laughs> what uh, is the culture? symbols, yeah. it's something that you whack. Yes, now what yes. are choke symbols? Uh, I should think that probably a choke symbol is a thing where you have two of them operated oh. by the foot. That would do, yes. That That'll would do. do nicely. Good. Two symbols cupped together on a vertical rod and held tightly, or brought together tightly, yeah. so that the sound they make is short and staccato. Would you care to imitate the sound they make? No, not, not do, the Don't least. do yourself an injury. No, 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 no. Have I got the full mark? Yes, you've got Good, marks. in that case, I will not do any more. <laughs> Be like that. I will. You've got two marks, and I will go... Chup, like that. Chup. <laughs> think chup, I was going to go... Chup in public? <laughs> No I shall choke. press on to the more amenable, I hope, Dennis Dorden. Dennis, for your two marks, what is a post-lude? Post? Post-lude <laughs> post sounds like a dirty postcard. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, well I, I presume it's it's a, a prelude, which is which has sort of gone round the back. <laughs> in That's in right. some way, Robert Bentley once wrote a book in which he put a postface instead of a preface. <laughs> preface. So I presume that it's um, it's the bit that goes at the end. It's like in um, in any old iron. That bit that goes. <laughs> that would do very nicely, Dennis. Thank you for two marks. A final piece, a postlude, the opposite of a prelude. Ian, a, a rather one of these technical ones for you. If a grand piano has a third pedal, foot pedal, what does that third pedal do? Quite a lot of them have, you know. Yes. <laughs> I've noticed it. And I've said to myself, what is that third pedal on the grand piano for, I have said. Well, now, we were banking on the fact that nobody had ever said that without sneaking up and having a go to find out. Yes, and they always say that in, 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 the sign of a, of, a, of a keen mind is, is a spirit of inquiry. Exactly. Which puts me in the blunt class. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, having said that, uh, I can only imagine that it might possibly uh, be to reinforce what one of the other ones does. Uh, in other words, you would put one down and then put that one down to lock the one in position so that you could use the other one. That's what I thought. I was thinking it was kind of a break when you push it, you know, <laughs> that they have on prams. You know. I just think if you've got a downhill <clears throat> concert platform, it yeah. locks it so that the piano won't roll. Therefore, the piano roll, you've heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> I must give you half a mark, because in, at one point you inadvertently gave a little bit of a correct part of the answer. <laughs> um, what the third and middle pedal does is, is it sustains notes that have already been depressed while allowing notes played subsequently to be short and staccato. You yes. see, if you play a chord, yeah. press the what's wrongly called the loud pedal, the sustaining pedal... You, 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 everything else will ring that you mm. play after that. But use the middle pedal and you can play staccato, short notes, thereafter. Mm. Yes, half mark out of two. Frank Muir, what is an alp horn? Um, a very long, very, very long, not just long, but very, very long, round bit of wood with a hole through the middle. And sometimes it's got a bend which supports it. And um, Swiss peasantry, laughing Swiss peasantry, in <laughs> leather knickers... <laughs> blow down one end at dusk to call the Gouya cheeses in. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> I'm happy to say your, your answer's much more fun than mine. Uh, two marks, Frank. A wind instrument having a wooden tube anything up to 12 feet long used by Swiss peasants to call the cattle home. Nowadays, I'm told, they sometimes use them to fool tourists having an accomplice in the distance to provide the echo. <laughs> <laughs> a tape recorder, I should think. <laughs> two marks. We hear now some uh, singing, some ladies and gentlemen doing singing of operatic or ballad music. One mark for the title of the piece, another for the composer, David. <laughs> yes, would you like to expand a little on that? Just a little. Cavalleria Rusticana. Yes, which piece from it, though? Um, it's the, the sort of lead-in to the Easter, Easter hymn. hymn. Thank you. That's one mark, and the composer of... Oh, Cav that's for one, I say. <laughs> Your cutting rate's a bit tonight, aren't you? <laughs> um, that, uh, yeah, well, uh, It's one of these elusive Mascani. ones that one can uh, never think of. Yes, Mascani, thank you for the other mark. Dennis. David Franklin is smirking, smirking the way I shall smirk when they play a Tony Bennett record. <laughs> <coughs> to him. <laughs> Ian, does, that, does it jingle at all? Oh, it, it jingles, it positively jangles. Mm. Um, I, th I think we might, we might ask for, for one of his uh, all right, one subtle... All right, um, celebrated yes. and lead us down the wrong alley type clue. <laughs> well, you can have the title or the composer and you give me the other, you know. I think we'll have... Um, the title. Which language would you like it in? <laughs> English? 
Right, in English. I love you. Yes, I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I knew that much. I thought, I thought we had to give the, the opera and the composer. No, no, just the title of the piece. Oh, uh, I could have given that. I'm oh, so sorry. Oh, could you? Oh, yes. And, yes, and yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I knew it was et, et liebe dies. Yes, yes well, think all right. So did I. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if that's really so, Ian, yes. I'll, I'll let you have that yes. one, yes. Yes, the title is then Ich liebe dich, or I love you. Bye, for the other mark. Now, I must tell you, it's by Grieg. I Edvard Grieg, Norwegian. Scottish extraction, but Norwegian. One mark out of two. Ian, your turn. Here's one for you. <laughs> Title composed. Do you want it in English or Italian? <laughs> uh, I'm happy to tell you I've got it here in both, so yes. either will do. <laughs> oh, well, it, it's, um, it's De Vieni alla Finestra. Yes. Uh, which, uh, it's just the serenade of um, Don Giovanni or Don Juan. Yes, thank you. Uh, by Mozart. Mozart. Or Come to the Window, perhaps, in English. Come yes. to the Window, yes, Marks. that would uh, yes. that would do very well. Thank you, and Frank's turn. Note as, um, can I speak uh, with a in English? Oh, that would be nice. Yes. With regional undertones, <laughs> it's uh, yeah. I note as, on wings of song. I'll bear yes. thee. One mark by for dear speech. We are bent now. By well, it's a Mendelssohn art. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you, Mendelssohn art. <laughs> yes, it is. There's your other mark, and I see from the scoreboard that at the moment, but only perhaps at the moment, David Franklin and Frank Muir lead by two and a half marks. Let's just test the audience on instrumentalists and which instrument they play. Menuhin audience plays the oh. violin, thank you, tell me, and Artie Shaw plays the clarinet, clarinet thank you. Open. Here are some, perhaps slightly less easy for our contestants. For one mark, and now please, audience, don't help him this time, for one mark, David, which instrument does Lionel Tertis play? He doesn't play it now. <laughs> no. But... He was the one of the world's greatest viola players. Yes, thank you, viola. Lionel Curtis viola is right. Is Dennis, a... one mark there. Dennis, which instrument do you connect with Dizzy Gillespie? I connect uh, a beret and a beard and dark glasses and a trumpet. Yes, thank you. A mark there. Ian, which instrument did Glenn Miller play? He played uh, what <coughs> I believe is known in the trade as the sludge pump. It isn't, actually, no. It's only, not? only known in magazine articles <laughs> that no jazz musician ever <laughs> called it a sludge pump in his oh, life. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> uh, the trombone. Yes, the trombone. It's like the gobstick, which is the other one no musician ever yeah, uses. Yeah. Only people in quizzes call them gobsticks and sludge <laughs> pumps and slip holes. Well, it's right, we're in one. <laughs> <laughs> How right you are, yes. A mark there. Frank, instrument for Sidonie Goosens. Well, there's a clever family. Harp. Yes. Yes, Harpies. lady harpist, sister of Leon, Mary, uh, Eugene, Goosens, and so on. As you say, a fine musical family. One mark. It occurred to our question compiler the other day that quite a few song titles contain the names of famous painters. See if you can spot the painter, David. <laughs> I know the name of his mother. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that would do. It was Whistler's <laughs> mum. Yes, Whistler. The painter, James McNeil Whistler. Thank you. Two marks. Dennis, you have to work this one out a bit. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, 
Well, well this, would, uh, this would be a copper engraving. Bye. 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 By Constable. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it could even be by Sergeant. That's true. Yeah. John Singer Sergeant. The Sergeant sings that song in the Pirates of Penzance. You have two marks. Ian, another painter. <laughs> Yes, Monet is the root of all evil. <laughs> Claude Monet is the root of all evil. Or Manet, if you... Oh, well, the different chap. Oh, I know a different chap, but it was just a different pronunciation. Oh, yes, too. yes, yes. Oh, you've got two marks. Have you any Manet? Another painter. <laughs> <laughs> Another painter for Frank this time. Was uh, Rupert Dolly Cart, mm. <laughs> who, was, who was an amateur painter, <laughs> or it could be uh, Salvador Dali. <laughs> hello, Salvador Dali. Yes, hello, Dolly. Two marks. Here's the bit you've all been waiting for: the singing round, oh. or singing square, as it's called. Graham uh, Dally. Watch it. <laughs> Don't like me getting laughs, Frank. No, I know. Graham Dally starts off a tune on one of his keyboard instruments, and you gentlemen pick up the tune for a mark, the words for a mark, and there's a bonus mark for carrying on where he leaves off. David. Now is the hour when, when we <laughs> must say goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> and on. Uh, I prefer not to, but if you insist, I'll see what else there is still left in stock. <laughs> Got any more? It's a Maui song. I shall cut in at this point and give you um, <clears throat> one mark for carrying on the tune. Uh, well, I don't know, half a mark for the words, I suppose, and half a mark for only very quietly going back to the beginning. <laughs> so that's two out of three, and you'll cut yourself very lucky. You've collapsed. Some singing for Dennis. <laughs> I had it till you (laughs) started. That's sung by Harry Belafonte. Yes, right. The first topless male singer. Um, (laughs) Hey, Mr. Tallyman, tally me banana. Daylight come and I want to go home. (laughs) Dale, 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 (laughs) Dale, (laughs) Dale. Surprisingly exuberant performance for you. It was. <laughs> it was sheer fear and panic. Although, <laughs> almost extrovert, that was. Yeah. <laughs> I think, do, do you think two out of three, ladies and gentlemen? Three. three. I don't want your blooming charity. All right, then. <laughs> we don't get paid according you to the You say three. Really. I've got, you say three. I've got the words in front of me. <laughs> Nothing like that. Uh, all right, three out of three, because they're trailing at the moment, I think. And see how Ian gets on. The, the, sun, the of nights in Singapore, days on the nights shore. in Singapore, a pair of gay pajamas, a gay pair of gay pajamas that I bought but never, that I bought but never wore. Oh, thank you so much. Leave it. It's marvellous, you know, in the opera house we have the prompter <laughs> who, who gives the first word of every line and uh, I've got a marvellous prompter here. <laughs> Thank you very much. That song was entitled... Thank you so Thanks, much, Dennis, for the memory. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Uh, actually, Bob Hope and was it Shirley Ross sang no, about... Francis Lang. Whoever it was, anyway. They sang about four different choruses of this and the chorus I've got down here bears no relationship to what you sang at all. I've got the burning toast and prunes and the sweet Adelines and... Oh, yes, Sunburn on the Shore. You're quite right. Anyway, you've got three marks. Thank you. Singing from Frank. Why, 
up in the ocean, the Navy's cavalry. The worst lyric line that ever been. <laughs> the Navy's cavalry. Signs over the fish shop. I'll be flying tonight. Wings over the Navy. The Navy's cavalry. <laughs> it's really nothing like the word. <laughs> Uh, one and a half out of three is the best I can manage, Frank. Mm -hmm. One and a half out of three. <laughs> Here's a test of your knowledge of shows or films. Who's in them, who sings what, and questions of that kind. David, in Doing What Comes Naturally, one finds the same sort of philosophy as in I'm Just a Girl Who Can't Say No. Can you name, please, the two composers concerned? Doing What Comes Naturally... I'm just a girl who can't say no. I can ask that, answer that absolutely briskly and with complete confidence, no. <laughs> On the other hand... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd like to put an each-way bet on Irving Berlin for the first one and Richard Rogers Rogers. for the second Yes, one. thank you, David. That'd be very nicely for two marks. D uh, Dennis, may I remind you of Princess Grace of Monaco? Oh, Grace, yes. I've got a question about her. Her first and last films had a word in common in their titles. What was that word, and what was the duet she sang with Bing Crosby? Her last film was High Society. Yes. Um, from which I deduced that her first film must have been High Noon, which I Correct didn't Correct again. Yeah. So the word in common, High, one mark. Um, and the so the, the duet... Oh, wait a minute. The duet... Who wants to be a millionaire? That no, that was Celeste Holman, Frank Sinatra. Mm. What? Does true love? True love. It must true be. love is right. I give to you and they give mm. to you. Give to me that one. Yes, two marks. <laughs> Ian, the first two films in which Cliff Richard starred earned him million-selling discs. What were the two big hits from the second of those films? That's a nasty one, isn't it? The second, because I was all primed up to say Summer Holiday. Well, that was the second. It was Summer Holiday. <laughs> <laughs> well, we wanted the one from the second one. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, two hit songs from Summer Holiday is what yeah. it amounts to, then. Well, well, one was the, the, su the Summer Holiday itself. No. No. Well, uh, Not surely. a record-selling, million-selling disc <laughs> hit. No. We're all going on a Sun Summer Holiday. holiday. We're no. Oh, yeah, that's... Well, I, I think I, it's that's a one I, 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 I remember hearing. Mm -hmm. and well, mine. there you are. The answer I have here, I have two answers. Would you like to try for another song from the same show? I don't think next I could. Time. Be there was because a song called Next Time. Uh -huh. They probably yeah. didn't sell more than a dozen. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 yes. the one I, I remember from it was Summer Holiday. Well, we're all, you're right. But uh, anyway, I have to go by the book. And it, the, the next time was one. It's the one he sang on the Areopagus overlooking the uh, Parthenon, if you remember, when they got to Greece. And the other one, Bachelor Boy. That was the big success of uh -huh. the film. One mark out of two, then, Ian. Frank, her film debut in Romance on the High Seas gave her one hit song. Later, in Calamity Jane, <coughs> she had another. Can you name the songs concerned? <coughs> lots of people have played Calamity Jane, haven't they? Mm -hmm. But not lots. Of, Only one of... Yes. Doris Day. Yes, Doris Day. Now, two songs. One from Romance on the High Seas, uh, her first film. Her biggest. Well, let's, let's go back to the other one, which I saw. Yeah. Um, it's the, the Deadwood stage is coming on over the hill. No, 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 that was... Uh, and there's... Uh, Once I had a secret love... I'll buy that for a mark. She was on a horse yes. at the time. I'll buy that for a mark. Yeah. <laughs> um, secret love. Her, her, her other big hit was... Uh, you smile and there's the guns again. You smile and I hear violins. It's magic. There's your other mark. Yes, two mark. And on that many notes, I'm afraid we end my music for this week with a victory by one mark for Ian Wallace and Desmond. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Taking part in my music were David Franklin, Frank Muir, Dennis Norton, and Ian Wallace. Graham Daly was at the keyboard, and the chairman was Steve Race. The questions were compiled by Edward J. Mason, and the program was produced in London by Tony Schreier.
The BBC presents My Music. A musical panel game devised by Edward J. Mason and Tony Schreier. And here's Steve Race to introduce the team. My music takes the air again with the same panellists, David Franklin, partnered by Frank Muir, Ian Wallace, assisted by Dennis Norton. <laughs> we begin with David. This round concerns Wagner overtures, or in Wagner's own word, preludes. Same thing. Just a mark for the title of the opera, and I'm afraid in this round, no second thoughts, gentlemen. We begin with David Franklin. <laughs> Rejecting a suggestion by my partner that it's the overture to Naughty Marietta. <laughs> I confirm that it is, in fact, the overture to the Master Singers, or in German, Die Meistersänger. Yes, how right for one mark. And I think that overture is perhaps one of the most marvellous, wonderful, single short pieces of music on earth. Anyway, that's just you my opinion. You think it's short? Well, <laughs> short compared to the opera, for instance. Yes. Oh, it's short, yes. Anyway, you have your mark, David, the Master, the master Singers. <laughs> Dennis Norton, an overture... For you, by Wagner. Mm -hmm. Everybody nutting away there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, no second thoughts. No, no first thought. <laughs> <laughs> or in German? Well, well, well uh, hmm? you, you think it's Tannhauser? Yes, I do. Yeah, well, there's a body of opinion here that thinks it's Tannhauser or Yes, Heuser. yes. You said that with great conviction. You're right for a mark. <coughs> uh, musical people, knowing that um, Wagner overtures are coming up, will be waiting for the interval of a minor sixth, and they're going to get it now, because this is Ian's turn. <coughs> I've never been described as an interval of a minor sixth before, <laughs> uh, but uh, I think that this is a uh, prelude to a piece that is always rather unfamiliar when you see it written up outside an opera house in Italy, because they uh, have um, their own Italian way of putting up Tristano e Isotta, <laughs> uh, which uh, is... Uh, Therefore, the prelude to Tristan and Isolde. Yes, thank you. You sure it mark? wasn't a restaurant that sold Tristan and Isolde? <laughs> <laughs> I hasten to, th to cue in a Wagner overture for Frank Muir. How the West was won. Have you done? I've got the done. West. It's the Western approaches. Yes, it's probably. Uh, der Fliegende Olender. You got that from your friend. Well, you? what of it? <laughs> <laughs> it's allowed. Yes. All I said was flying Dutchman and Frank immediately translated it into German. It's like that. Yes, for a mark. Very good. I took Very German good. between October and December. <laughs> 1936. <laughs> you flick it on. Very, very, very good. Big boned music, isn't it? Mm. Here are some questions on general musical knowledge. For two marks, David Franklin, what is a soubrette? And can you think of a soubrette part in an opera? A soubrette? Mm. The light soprano part. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say that, for instance, Blanchon in Entfernung is a soubrette part. So would I. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes. Well, now, I suppose one can't have a list of everything in front of one, can one? <laughs> One must bow to the superior knowledge of one's paddleists. What have you got uh, there? Oh, I've got... Oh, that's crafty of you. Yes. Um, I nearly walked into that one, too. Try another one. Uh, try, try another one. Uh, uh, go on, you tell me. You yes, proved to me right. that Blanchon isn't No, no, super... I'll, I'll give you your two marks. It's a shoe polish. <laughs> <laughs> a subret, subret is originally a comedy actress who played a waiting maid, but generally speaking, a pert female character part taken by a light soprano. Well, there you are. Well, you've got your marks, but Mention I... Luncheon is a serving maid who is pert. Well, there you are, exactly. You see, I've got... A fair maid of pert. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis, what do you know about the balalaika, and how many strings has it? It was the name of the musical by Eric Mashwitz, <laughs> and it's, uh, it's Russian... Mm -hmm. What do I know? It's like that thing, I know two things about a horse and one of them is rather coarse. <laughs> <laughs> about the balalaika, I know about one and a half things. It's a kind of Russian guitar, which That's right. makes a plinging sound. But of course, in the, in, in, in the show, it was the nightclub, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the balalaika nightclub. Yes, it's the instrument we're after, Ian. Yeah, I thought oh, it was. Know, yeah. <laughs> How many strings has it? People are surprised well, when they find out. Are they? Yes. Well, stand by for surprises, gang. <laughs> gang, you're going to be surprised. No. It has 38. <laughs> <laughs> and a half. <laughs> it's that half string that falls in there. It has, in fact, three strings, <laughs> and only three. It's triangular-shaped and ranging from... Well, the first figure was right. <laughs> <laughs> you have one mark out of two there. Ian, what do you understand by tonic sulfur? Well, it's very good at this time of the year because <laughs> we're all a bit run down. <laughs> And you can get it without a prescription. Uh, and uh, it's principally used in Wales, among Welsh choirs. Uh, it is a form of notation. Uh, it's something that I have never understood at all, but I do occasionally hear my uh, singing colleagues, particularly, as I say, those who come from Wales, who, instead of uh, just going... Are going so la ti do fa mi fa lo si, and I think, what are they doing? <laughs> and uh, it, it, it was, um, sub I imagine it was invented because it was easier, supposed to be easier for for people to to uh, uh, learn to read music in this particular way. As far as I'm concerned, it is absolutely incomprehensible. I think it's a diabolical system I always have, but uh, it has one great advantage, you can transpose easily with, uh, once you've learnt your do fa me things, it, they apply to all keys, of course. You I will, see, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, you um, don't have to sort of be doing an E-flat seventh. No, that's right. Inga, pardon? No. <laughs> English system of musical notation much used in choral work dates, I was surprised to find, from the mid-19th century as a means of teaching sight singing. Two marks. Frank, what is a water organ? <laughs> well, it's it's, it's uh, name, uh, expression, applied to uh, very antique um, central heating systems. <laughs> which make a noise uh, euphoniously in the night. It's the song, Oh, Denny Boy, the pipes, the pipes. Uh, <laughs> the calling. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's... It's like, like a water hammer makes a, makes a, a percussive noise. A water organ makes a melodic noise. Um, two marks, air for three, and uh, <laughs> I will desist any further. Or, <laughs> it could be a, a, uh, an organ where the pipes, instead of being um, worked orally or by hand, have um, water injected up through them. No, I've, I'll cancel that, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> I'll buy that one. <laughs> it's a hydraulic organ is what you mean, isn't it, in fact? Yes, there is a connection between organ and water in the answer. <laughs> a type of organ invented many centuries BC by the Egyptians, used by the Romans and others. It drives air through the organ pipes by water pressure. And it is, in fact, the oldest form of organ known. Fascinating. Yes. <laughs> Two marks for interest. Here are some vocal odds and ends to identify. David, listen please and then tell me which aria from which opera. Well, 
It's an aria of the Königin der Nacht from Zauberflöte by Mozart. Yes, thank you. Would you like to, <laughs> would you like to put the composer's name into English for <laughs> Any of that into English, please, would be welcome. Uh, I, I prefer to think of it in German. No, well, come it, on. It was the on. aria of no. the Queen of the Night yes. from Mozart's Magic Flute. Flute, two marks, thank you, yes. Dennis, from which show does this come, and who is the singer we hear? Who can I turn to when nobody needs me? My heart wants to know, and so I must go where destiny leads me. <laughs> It's, um... I think that was Matt Munro. Yes, a mark. Um, who Can I Turn To came from the follow-up to Stop the World, which is called... Well, it had a long title over here, the, the uh, Roar, Roar of the Grease Paint and the Smell of the Crowd. But in America, it was only just called The Roar of the Grease Paint. They didn't want to insult the audience. <laughs> <laughs> I had Norman Wisdom in over here, actually, to start, didn't mm -hmm. Yes, I didn't need all that. You've got no. two marks long ago. <laughs> oh. Ian, here's a, here's a folk song. Can you please name the tune and tell me from which collection it comes? Scottish or a Hebridean uh -huh. song. You're on the track. Yes. Uh, Kennedy Fraser <laughs> collection, I would yes, think, probably. Right. Yes. And it's this one, Sad Am I Without Thee. It's, it's uh, in the Gaelic there. And um, it's um, the Eriske, uh, the on. Eriske Love Lilt. Thank you. Two marks. Frank, what's this called and who are the two singers? <laughs> the pussy. <laughs> sung by Tom and Jerry. <laughs> Beyond day. that, I cannot go. Does your partner know? He's no. strangely no. silent. I, I was absolutely baffled by it. You, you have this sort of end like it. calm, usually associated with playing the number one record in the hit parade. But you don't know it? No. no Ian, Ian, You'll be so mad Ian. when you find out who Ian, it is. No. Yes. Well, Ian, you, you tell him. You tell him, Ian. But it is Elizabeth Schwarzkopf and Victoria de Los Angeles, That's accompanied right. by Gerald Moore. That's <laughs> right. Do you know the title of what they're singing? Uh, it's a piece by Rossini, I That's think. That's right. Can you give a, us the record sort of number? Cats, the, the Due Gatti, That's the two right. cats. Duetto Buffo de Due Gatti. And I imagine it was the recording of his farewell... Concert right. at the festival. Having a bit of fun for, for dear Gerald, yes, quite. Mm. The Cats duet by Rossini, it was, as you say, Victoria Los Angeles and Elizabeth Schwarzkopf. Uh, well, I can't give you any marks, I'm afraid, there. <laughs> I can but turn to the scoreboard and find that at the moment, this stage of the game, Ian Wallace and Dennis Norden lead by one mark. <laughs> this round is to do with operas and shows. Two marks are at stake. David. Two composers, David, wrote works called Peak Darm. Who were they, and under what English title is the more recent opera better known? Um, one of them was written by Francesco Emenegildo, <laughs> Cavaliere Zuppe de Mele. I may have missed out one or two names. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely uh, right, yes. And the, the other, other one... <laughs> The other was written by Tchaikovsky, and the name under which that is better known is Queen of Spades. 
absolutely right. Supe and Tchaikovsky, also the Queen of Spades, two marks. Dennis, four people were involved in creating the stage musical Expresso Bongo. Half a mark for each name. Well, uh, well you, if it's uh, everybody's favourite Wolf Mankiewicz, Julian Moore was involved in it. Yes. And Monty Norman Good man. is always involved with Wolf Mankiewicz's musicals. And if there was a fourth, it's likely to be David Hennick who writes with Monty Norman. I really think you get some applause for mm-hmm. that. Marvellous, yes. yes. That's the sort of question I can always rely on my <laughs> partner. <laughs> Marvellous. Two marks. Ian, who composed Wozzeck and what was Wozzeck by profession? Finish relying now. Wozzeck <laughs> 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 uh, was written by Alban Berg around about uh, the end of the First War. And Wozzeck uh, himself was... Uh, uh, well, he was the common man, really. Um, um, it's a bit more than that. By profession, I said. People aren't... Well, he was a soldier. Ah, that's what I wanted to know. And, yes, and he you. went through a great <laughs> many very short and dramatic scenes ending up with him being drowned in a lake. Mm. A soldier, Batman, in fact. Yes, two marks. Thank you, Alban Berg, the composer. Frank, where would you find Pedro the Fisherman? And for your other mark, who wrote his song? You'd find him uh, belting up the beach <laughs> at Lisbon. Yes. When right. the chauffeur's already bringing the car with the ribbons on round the front <laughs> to take the bride away. <laughs> because he's a, he's a fisherman... Uh, who is beloved by the lady who's about to, to marry a fat vineyard proprietor. In fact, she's actually at the altar when this, this fisherman, to attract her attention, breaks into whistles. <laughs> yes. Due to the fact yes. that Harry Parr Davis discovered that if you put in enough whistling and recitativo, like, and then nobody's job broke out, and then uh, Minuel, Miguel, my father said, you don't have to write so much rhyme stuff, you see. <laughs> the title of the show was The yeah. Lisbon Story. The Lisbon Story, two marks. Thank you. Films and film music. A mark for the name of the film. Two more marks for the names of two top stars from the film. David. <laughs> Donkey Serenade. The name of the film. Donkey Serenade. The Firefly. From Firefly. Yes. And it's Jack Jones' name of Dad. Film. Jack Jones' Dad, Alan Jones. Yes. And, uh. Firefly. Jeanette. <coughs> no, they no, didn't twitch. And the donkey. <laughs> and the donkey. You've said it. It's good enough. Firefly was the film. Jeanette MacDonald, Alan Jones. Uh, Dennis, your turn. marvellous opening titles with the cat prowling through. That was The Man with the Golden Arm. Yes, that's right. The mark and two stars. Frank Sinatra and the impassive Miss Kim Novak. Would do very nicely. Thank you for your three marks. Film for Ian now. Well, all I can do here is to guess uh, on the type of music. It wouldn't be a film called Tunes of Glory, by any chance. No, but you've got the right sort of subject, or perhaps the composer has led you into the right sort of sphere, because it's a military kind of subject. Yes. Would you like me to give you the stars and you name the film or the other yeah. way around? Yeah. Which, whichever, way, uh, whichever way Dennis take would the like stars. it. <laughs> <laughs> take the stars. Take, we'll take the stars. Yes. All right, well, there's a long list here. David Niven, Anthony Quinn, Gregory Peck, Anthony Quayle, Stanley Guns Baxter, of Navarone. James Robertson, Justice yeah. Richard... Yes, Guns of Navarone. Uh, you have then the one mark out of the two there. And some music for Frank. <laughs> Uh, 
Play by water organ. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like the name of the film or the stars? Both. <laughs> Given the choice. Um, name of the film, please. Please, sir. The Longest Day. Oh! Good Lord, is it? That's music. Yeah. Sounds a bit wet for an enormous film like that. Well, that's well, that, that is everybody, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so name two. Kenny Moore. Ah, oh, well, that's one I've got down Kenny here. Kenny Moore. <laughs> Have a few more. Edward Everett Horton. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to hear just one other name I've got down there. <laughs> I didn't see the picture. Surely that's emerged by now. I'm going to give you one mark out of the three there. I don't think... I've got down here Eddie Albert, Arletti, Peter Lawford, William Holden, and a lot of uh, American stars as well as British ones. Well, <clears throat> we move on. Whenever we come to what's known as the singing bit, we try to speak <coughs> the choice of song somewhat to the contestant concerned. Mm. You know what happens here. Graham Daly plays a bit and then stops. It's up to you to carry on. A mark for the words, another for the tune, a third mark for carrying on from where he leaves off. David Franklin. <laughs> I think three marks there, no matter what happened, yes. I've got a version here by somebody else entirely, but yours is very nice. Uh, Dennis, your turn. I could tell you were a man of distinction, a real big spender, good-looking, so refined. <laughs> now, I have trouble remembering the word. You remember the tune. I can't say anything. <laughs> I don't know either, no. so... <laughs> Wouldn't you like to see what's going on in my mind? This is another one of those risque love lilts, because it, get, <laughs> it gets on about something I don't flip my cork for everyone I see. A big spender, spend a little time with me. You've got three marks, then. It's very good. Ian's third now. Ian. <laughs> If you have ten sons in a row, football teams make money, you know. Well, so you. keep your sunny side up, up. Let the sunshine come through. And then you'll never believe the next bit. Stand upon your legs, be like two fried eggs. <laughs> keep your sunny side up. Yes. <laughs> Three marks, Ian, and a song from Frank. There you are. Happy landing on a chocolate board. <laughs> so, <laughs> that brings us, I'm afraid... On a nice down key. To be win. <laughs> <laughs> to the end of our programme this week, congratulations to the winners, who, by two and a half marks, are Ian Wallace and Dennis North. Taking part in my music were David Franklin, Frank Muir, Dennis Norton and Ian Wallace. Graham Daly was at the keyboard and the chairman was Steve Race. Questions were compiled by Edward J. Mason, and the programme was produced in London by Tony Schreier. The BBC presents... My Music. A 
musical panel game devised by Edward J. Mason and Tony Schreier. And here's Steve Race to introduce the team. Hello. We invite you to another session of My Music. David Franklin and Frank Muir are on one side of me. On the other are Ian Wallace and Dennis Norton. <laughs> You might like to try answering the questions yourself, unless, of course, you happen to be here in our studio audience from whom no help, please. As I ask David Franklin first to listen to this piece of show music. We get packages from home, we get movies, we get shows, we get speeches from our skipper and advice from Tokyo Rose. We get letters doused with perfume, we get dizzy from the smell. What don't we get? David, what is it they don't get and where? Uh, something... It's in the South Pacific. Rogers and Hammerstein... No, what is it they don't get? Uh, something like a dame? A dame. There is nothing like a dame, and a dame is what they don't get. Actually, what they don't get, you know damn well. <laughs> you know <laughs> damn well, that's right. Steady on, old man. <laughs> Dennis Norton, who became a star on Broadway with this show? There! There! In the... the It's such a pleasant change not to have to be faced with an operatic <laughs> problem to solve. This was how to succeed in business without trying. Without really trying. Without really trying. One mark. And the star of it on Broadway was Robert Morse. Whether he became a star on that, I think he was quite well known before it. Well, all right. Mm. Who was uh, a star again on Broadway, if you prefer. <laughs> anyway, Robert Morse was the other mark. Two marks for you. Ian Wallace, a question for you. Go in court, go in court, if you find it hard to break the axe. Go in court, go in court, here's a little feminine advice. Roll your eyes and heave a little sigh. Mm. <laughs> Grunt and groan like you're about to die. Oh. <laughs> that is what's known as the mountain going court. Feminine advice. Who's feminine advice and to whom, Ian? Um, you mean uh, the specific name of the person? I would gave? like the name of the star, please. Well, the name of the star you would like, says he putting on his glasses and leaning over the... <coughs> <coughs> that is his prompt, yes. Mm. He's written... That the, I, can read the, I can read the surname, the Christian name, is, oh, that's better, Jane Powell. Yes, for one mark, and uh, to whom the advice? Um, seven brothers. <laughs> I'll give it to you, actually, six. <laughs> One of them had already won her, the other six were ah, the Gosh ones. Yes, I see. Good yeah. enough for two marks. You gave me a fright there. <laughs> Frank Miller, title please of this film, and who is the new 16 year old star it created? There's a little ditty there singing in the city, especially when they feel on the gin or the beer. Yeah. If you got the patience, your own imaginations will tell. Exactly what you want to do. Ah, <clears throat> the film is uh, Oliver. Yes. Um, Shaney Wallace plays Bill Sykes. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> no relation, then. No, no, no. Or the dog. <laughs> um, new 16 year old star created by that film. Uh, do you mean Oliver? No. Or I don't. the artful uh, Codger. Yes, that's more like it. Name, please. Um, Frank Muir. <laughs> And, uh, not and quite. Frankly, uh, I can't remember not having seen the film, the name of the Artful Dodger. You don't know, in fact. No, no. I don't know. Jack Wilde. One mark out of two. Next round. Everyday questions about everyday music. Well, actually, some of it's a bit far out, but see how you get on for two marks. David Franklin, what is a baguette? What? A baguette. It's a French loaf. <laughs> Very near. It's also a small French lady. <laughs> <laughs> or, <laughs> or it is a French bagpipe. No, sorry. Isn't it? No, it's it not. was when I played it. <laughs> <laughs> Baguette. 
B A G E W T E. No, B A G U E W T E. Ah, well. A bagot. <laughs> Some bag. A bagot. I, it's difficult, so I'll give you a hint. I've got two references to two of them here baguette de bois and baguette d'éponge. <laughs> well, one of them is made of wood, <laughs> and the other one made of Le Mans. <laughs> I'm there, to... Therefore, <laughs> woodwind instruments? Now, I'm going to give you one out of two for a very brave try indeed. Baguette is the French name for a drumstick. Also, sometimes a baton or the wooden uh. part of a violin bow. Baguette de bois, wooden drumsticks. Baguette d'éponge, sponge-headed sticks. I must say, a drumstick made of blancmange is a fault. <laughs> That's what you got your mark for. It's such Thank a happy God. thought. <laughs> Dennis Norton, what is a lure? Just in case there are anybody who's not familiar with this word, could you, could you spell it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, preposterous thought. Yes. L U R. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, <laughs> that uh, lure. Yes, yes. <laughs> you, yes. Well, this, this is. Um, the music, the mu- musically, you mean? Oh, of yes. The music. Oh, well. Of you know there is um, musical terms of of approbation and approval, like um, bravo, maestro, maestro. Is it? Well, this is a musical term of disapprobation and disapproval. For example, if I were to say, particularly to this team, I am now going to sing, they would say the L U R. <laughs> Other than that, or the suggestion, it's a word that's created purely by Scrabble manufacturers. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I have no idea. Well, Backwards, it spells rull. Rull, yes, yeah. which sounds more convincing. Not for the first time. I have the boring task of telling you what it really is. A lure is a prehistoric, or was a prehistoric, Scandinavian bronze horn. The lure, and this is interesting, is now used as a trademark for Scandinavian food exports, hence lure pack. Ah, anyway, it's... Ah, ah, says everybody. <laughs> Ian, you have rather an easy one, but don't worry, there's some more difficult ones to come. The mighty Wurlitzer. What was it, and how did it get its name? Well, it, that uh, is a bit easier, yes. Uh, it is an organ, uh, a cinema organ, a very large cinema organ. Mighty, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, it uh, was uh, made by a, a gentleman called Wurlitzer, or Wurlitzer, I suppose he might have been. And uh, I'm wondering whether it is in Radio City Music Hall in New York. Well, I'm wondering too, since it doesn't say on my card. <laughs> uh, you have two marks. A unit organ, as heard in cinemas, incorporating freak effects, e.g. bells, motor horns, etc. Uh, Wurlitzer was the name of the American firm marketing it, father and son, organ builders based on an idea I'm told by an Englishman named Hope Jones. Frank, what would happen if you removed a sound post? If you removed a sound post from where or from whom? Yeah, that's <laughs> or from where on whom? No, that's, that's the point. <coughs> oh, yes. I thank you, David. It's all right, any time. You're not just a face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I made a violin. I made a ukulele once. I made all sorts of things when I was very young. I started to make a typewriter. <laughs> of plywood. But I, I did make a ukulele once, and um, when the strings are stretched, you've got to have a bridge. And if you stretch the strings on the bridge, uh, the damn thing collapses, and this is a kind of um, little dolly's pit prop, <laughs> which you wedge in between the... Excuse the expression the belly of the instrument and the bit upon which the bridge rests because the bridge is like all of us under some strain <laughs> it's a thing that uh, that holds the bridge up marvellously complete answer I have nothing to add two marks to Frank Mio good for you <laughs> every member of our cast was once a child with one possible exception so now <laughs> So now we have some... <laughs> Lovely line to drop in, isn't it? <laughs> All looking at each other. 
<laughs> anyway, we have now some children's music. Oh. Just the title, please, for a single mark, David. Rolling home, rolling home. Title, title. What an extraordinary lot of children you have. <laughs> I've got sixpence. Ah, thank you, one mark. I've got sixpence. Dennis Norton, yours. A tish, a tish. Oh, they all fall down after yes, that, don't yes, they? Yes, they do, yes. Oh, where does that? It comes Cycle. in the middle. Yes, yes, oh, ring a ring of roses. Yeah. Yes, one mark. Okay. Ian, the title, please, of this song. Well, I think it's about time he did go home. <laughs> yes. uh, any ideas? Rolling home, make it jiggity. To market, to market. Well, it must have something to do with a pig. Your yeah. friend has got the idea. To market, to, to market, market, to buy, buy a fat you pig. Do yes, it with that's children right. on your yes. knee. Yes. Yes. To market, to Bar, market, to buy a fat <laughs> pig. One mark. Frank, can you name this nursery song, please? Upstairs and downstairs in his nightgown. <laughs> <laughs> Upstairs and downstairs lying down. In his nightgown. Time. In a nightgown. Is it Wee Willy Winky? It is indeed, <laughs> yes. Who else? We hope. Yes. Wee Willy Winky. <laughs> One mark. Opera. Oh. Uh, <laughs> now, don't get in my way. <laughs> 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 David Christoph Willibald von Gluck wrote an opera with only four characters apart from the chorus can you name it and tell me for which unconventional type of singer Gluck wrote the hero's part the best of Gluck <laughs> 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 ah, yes. well how about Orpheus I would do very nicely thank you do very nicely can you think, of his, it was. Can you think of his girlfriend to complete what? the Think of a girlfriend, or Is that part of the answer for which I get a mark? Yes. If I got to name all four characters? No, 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 just Orpheus and. Well, Eurydice. Yes, however. Or you... Eurydice. <laughs> yes, or Eurydice. Or as she was known in the family, <laughs> Peg. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And the. What was it, the unusual Un voice? Unconventional, I said. Unconventional, unconventional type of singer. Well, I don't know whether I ought to mention the word in company. <laughs> Try. And well, this may be my last broadcast. <laughs> Promises. Go down. Let's go down with our colours flying. A castrato. A castrato, yes. Thank you for your well won other mark of male alto. Nowadays, the part sung by a contrato. Two marks. Dennis Norton, you may not think you know opera, but you do. You'll know this one anyway. In which of Verdi's operas, Dennis, do Pistol and Bardolph appear, and for what voices were they written? Well, Pistol and Bardolph come from Henry IV and Henry V and Mary Wives of Windsor, so it must be something with false staff. Yes, that's what they false staff. He did a false, yeah. And for what was, it, what, what was the other bit? That, what, what voices were they written, Pistol and Bardolph? Oh, I, I, I just had a, a flash here. <laughs> um, <laughs> Bass yeah. and tenor. Bass and tenor is all right for your two marks in all. Yeah. Thank you. The opera full stuff. <laughs> the libretto was based on The Merry Wives of Windsor plus bits from Henry IV, part one. Ian, which opera begins with three norms and what are norms? N O R N S. Well, it's Dennis Norm. <laughs> <laughs> three norms. Three norms. Baby norm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Middle norm. <laughs> <laughs> and the great big norm. <laughs> The big Norn got up on the rostrum <laughs> in the middle of the stage and went, ha, 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 I'm a Norn. <laughs> but, uh, just no, no I'm, I'm not going to pursue this any it's further. So, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's have a, let, let's have a tiny little hint. Well, I've been sitting here thinking you've had so many easy questions in this game up to now that you ought to have a hard one for a change. something in Icelandic your... mythology? Is there any opera written about Icelandic mythology? Oh, hang around, forget Icelandic, but hang around mythology. Mm. Hang around mythology. You've got a new hang around. Um, yes, uh, 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 
I mean, well, it's operas based on mythology. <laughs> Um, mythology. Well, that sounds like The Ring. Yes, of Wagner. Mm, yes. Norm, now, I want well, it can't start. It can't be. I, I, I'm not. I'm not running up in The Ring, but I, 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 it's not Rheingold anyway. So we can dismiss that because that's that starts with. Um, uh, never mind. Go on. With <laughs> Rheingold. <laughs> right. You're still right. You're still all right. So then we come from from uh, from that. We come to. Um, we got it. <laughs> Go to Demerung at the other end. Ah, you got it. One mark. <laughs> <clears throat> Fancy if I'd given that up in the middle, you know, when I was when I was flagging. <laughs> don't ever tell me I don't help you. Go to Demerung is correct. Thank you very much. Um, for your other mark, what are norns? And you don't know, do you? Mm. Well, norns must be uh, uh, mythological, uh, 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 mythological, because there are giants and there weren't giants, <laughs> and there are dwarfs. Yeah. Yeah, say no more. The fates. Yeah. They were weaving the rope of fate. You've got one mark out of two. Frank Miller, in which opera and by whom does a half-wit appear in the last act dressed as a bear? <laughs> <laughs> the answer's so obvious it's hardly worth right taking for that. Next round. Have a go at Boris. Have a go at Boris. And Boris, of course. Steve Boris. You may wish to have a go at Boris, but <laughs> Boris <laughs> won't get you anywhere with this one, I'm afraid. No. Let's, 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 put our, let's put our cards on the table. I can help you, Frank. The opera is described as a lively, rustic jollification with catchy oh. airs and invigorating dances, and that'll help oh, yes. your friend David. Oklahoma. <laughs> The, the Buttered Bride. The Buttered Bride. We'll get, you, we'll get you a mark. And the composer? Smetana. <laughs> Smetana, we prefer. For the other mark, yes. Vasek is the halfway. He takes the place of the bear in a travelling show. What we're really doing in this next round is testing your knowledge in the sense of German and Italian. In each case, a famous composer's name, listen to this, has been translated, and we want you to translate it back. David Franklin, who was Joseph Green? Joseph. Joseph Green, an Italian gentleman. Joseph. That's Italian. Green. Yes. And that's been translated into. He's an Italian composer, and we've put him into English. Can Work you at him, him, Steve. He'll get yeah, it. Can you put him back into Italian, please? <laughs> Joseph. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, oh, green, you said. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ah, I thought you said Greek. What a bluffer you are. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not at all. I really thought it was the Ich liebe dich chap. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, well, I know this. This yeah. is Verdi. And uh, Joseph being... Oh, Giuseppe. Giuseppe, thank you. Yes, there's a mark there for you. <coughs> Dennis Norton, who was John Brook? Brook. Brook. In, in Ger quick, quick. The German for Brook. Quick. Quick. Or, or Italian. The Rhine. Is it Fiume? Is it's river. German gentleman, John German. Brook. 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 No. Brook? No. No, no. It's not Bar what we're after. Bar Bar you a very confident looking lady in a blue hat a very confident blue hat actually, is, is, why don't you Bach. say what she's saying she's saying Bach yes first name John Johann, Johann Bach will get you a mark <laughs> Ian who would you say was Johnny Ostrich <laughs> Johnny Ostrich Leonard Feather <laughs> <laughs> Johann, Johann Strauss. Well, yes. Good, good. The first. <laughs> oh, no, the second. <laughs> Either will do for a mark. And Frank Muir, who is Mr. Greenberg? In which language? <laughs> Italian. Italian? Yes. Uh, Mr. Greenberg. Mr. Greenberg. Signor. Uh, Signor Greenberg. <laughs> yes. Monteverde. Monteverde, thank you for a mark. Monteverde. Now for the round in which Graham Daly plays a variety of tunes on a variety of keyboards, and we ask the team to pick up words and music at the point where he leaves off. One mark for the music, one for the words, one for not going back to the start. David Franklin. are yearning all together turn the dark clouds inside out will the boys come home there's a silver lining to the clouds out shining big finish turn the dark clouds inside out will the boys come Oh. 
lovely. I'm awarding you two and a half out of three. <laughs> because you put the last line in the middle and missed out completely, though your lads are far away, they dream of home. It was a lovely well, stirring. It was there for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they got, the audience got three, you got two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Rehearsal, seven o'clock tomorrow night. <laughs> Dennis Norton, your turn to do some singing. <laughs> the rain in Spain falls mainly on the plain. I think, I think he's got, got it. it. <laughs> Tiger, he's got it. I think you've got it. I think I've got it. I don't think there's a cure for it. Um, <laughs> Now, now, once again... And now, once again... <laughs> in Spain... Well, in in Hampshire... Uh, no, <laughs> that doesn't come there. Oh, now, in one. Spain... On the plain... Isn't, it, isn't that big go there? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just run through my phone. Let's start again. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Worry not. All I you, want is a room somewhere. You've got two out of three. <laughs> <laughs> two out of three, I think, is fair enough. Oh. A song. Not perhaps not quite his song, but a song from Frank Miller. Somewhere in heaven you you were fashioned for me, <laughs> angel eyes, <laughs> angel eyes has led me to you. Now I see. <laughs> Nice I used to boy. <laughs> <laughs> used to sing this, listen to a record of this in Iceland. <laughs> well, I thought for 18 months doing the war, trying to get home. <laughs> <laughs> I think they used to put the lights out about then, that's all I knew. <laughs> <laughs> Made a bit of a Reykjavik of that, didn't you? No. It was, um, <laughs> uh, you got halfway through, and I think uh, two and a half out of three, it goes on, nothing can save me. <laughs> Fate. <laughs> They gave me a sign and so on. And I say, maybe. He's off again. That's worth the extra half marks. It is actually, yes. He's come back with the other half. Three marks, all right. Just to confuse my scorer here, Sylvia. Ian, you'll find this one very, very difficult, but there's nothing like a problem for cooling the blood. Here's yours. Standing one day <laughs> on the banks of the cool Shalimar, he gazed at the bottom as it peacefully lay by the light of the evening star. Pom, pom, pom. Away on a hilltop sat combing her hair, his fair hippopotamus maid. The hippopotamus was no ignoramus, so sang her the sweet serenade all together, together now. now. Mud, mud, glorious mud, and nothing quite like it for cooling the blood. So follow me, follow, down the I'm afraid my music ends for another week. We hope you enjoyed it. The final score gives a victory by one and a half marks for Ian Wallace and Dennis North. Taking part in my music were David Franklin, Frank Muir, Dennis Norton and Ian Wallace. Graham Daly was at the keyboard and the chairman was Steve Race. Questions were compiled by Edward J. Mason, and the programme was produced in London by Tony Schreier.
BBC presents... My Music. A musical panel game devised by Edward J. Mason and Tony Schreier. And here's Steve Race to introduce the team. Here's My Music again. The last in the present series, I'm sorry to say. Frank Muir and David Franklin are, as always, competing against Dennis Norton and Ian Wallace. Did you <laughs> In this first round, I want, please, the name of the orchestral piece and the name of the composer. Music first for David Franklin. Strauss Johann. This is Waldteufel, isn't it? Yes, it is. Ah. <laughs> Wald, wood, teufel, devil, do you see? Uh, Devilish cunning. Oh, one of the, one of the, now we come. Jokes, yes. You want mm. to know what was playing it? No, the title. Ah, I was going to tell you it was an orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> you want the title? Well, let's not Isn't fool it? about. Because I don't know what it's called. One mark of Teufel. It's called the Grenadier's Waltz. <clears throat> oh, one out of two. <clears throat> Dennis, one for you. Of course, I would say this is my beloved, but I take it that it isn't. I did say orchestral piece. Yes. yes. Well, it, the 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 uh, kismet was was uh, the, was all borrowed in music, so I take it it's borrowed in was the composer. Yes, there's a, a mark. But what the original title of it was, I would you say it was a day kind of piece or a night kind of piece? Oh yes, it's a, it's a night kind of piece. It's a nocturne, as in the old Kent <laughs> Road. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> A nocturne by Borodin. Um, yeah, I, I, I'll give you one mark, one and half a mark for nocturne because you did know it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. We, I, this is without Ian's help. Now, <laughs> and now comes the crusher. Yes. Um, Ian, go in and, and the coup de grace. No, I don't think I can do that. Oh, but right. I've got a feeling that we, 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 if we mention Prince Igor, we've got a little bit more. No, 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 I'm afraid you're going further away. Oh, we're going further away? Yeah, no. I've already given you one and a half hours. holding up four fingers. I don't know whether this is a bribe or... (laughs) Inducement. It's the size of scotch he wants, actually. I'm, um... (laughs) Before things get any further out of hand, you've got one and a half marks without deserving it. (laughs) Stick at that. (laughs) Borrowed in nocturne from quartet number two. Ian Wallace, your turn. What's this? (laughs) And by whom? I'd say it was Mantovani. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not the answer to the question. I and know the words of it. But it's, and, uh, and the fingers of the law. No, no, it's the, the instrumental piece. Ah. Yes, no, a, a, a brave try, Dennis. Mm. Frasquita Serenade by... Frasquita. <laughs> Frasquita. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Franz Lehar. Oh. No marks, I'm afraid, for Ian Frank Mills' turn. get to the tune, do they? 
<laughs> they sort of march up to it and then <laughs> march away again. I think it's on the flip side of Fresquito's <laughs> yeah. serenade. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My mate and I have the opinion that it might be Slavonic. Yeah, well, How does yes. that grab you? It really grabs me fairly well. You're going, you're going to chicken out of this one, are you? Chicken out. What? That's a clue. It's Clear. a clue. <laughs> the Egmont Overture. <laughs> Oh, how I wish I could... <laughs> how I wish I could give you marks for that, you know. Like half a mark, for instance. OK, audience? Right, yes, yes, half a mark. It's the bridal march from Cock Door, the golden cock <laughs> By Rimsky-Korsakov. <laughs> well, we move on. General knowledge, the sort of musical information one acquires in a lifetime of listening and learning about music. David Franklin, what is a pickup group? <laughs> a what? <clears throat> a pickup group. Well, um, somebody goes down Denmark Street. He wants some people to do a gig, <laughs> and they ask him how much, and he just picks up a group to go and play. Yes, a gig. He'd, he'd do better in Archer Street than Denmark Street. Mm. Archer Street's where the musicians hang out. Denmark Street's the publishers. But um, I get your point. I get your drift. You would say, really, a group of musicians booked for a single date or engagement as opposed to a regular band. Of course. Um, what else do they say? <laughs> a pick-up group for two marks. Dennis Norden, what is a shofar? It's a ram's horn, yes. which is, is played in a synagogue Yes. Uh, on certain high holidays. Yes, solemn ritual occasions and so on, as mentioned in the Old Testament. Two marks for you, Dennis. Ian... Where would you find a chanter and drones and which is which? And perhaps you might like to demonstrate vocally. Um, well, you'd find them north of the border in Scotland. And they down flowers, them. plants. Hmm? Flowers, plants, what are they? Oh, they are... Um, <laughs> well, one, one is uh, an instrument for practising the bagpipes, uh, which is uh, a chanter, mm -hmm. which is uh, simply a, a sort of like one of the wooden pipes off a bagpipe, uh, that you, you practice the, the notes that move as opposed to the nice. note that remains yeah. steady. It's the, um, it's the part that does the song. <laughs> and then the drone is the bit that goes. <laughs> and when you, when you put the two together, it goes. <laughs> And don't expect to get another word out of me tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Two marks. <thank> you. <laughs> Frank, here's a quotation, Frank, from rather an up-to-date musical reference book, and I quote, The man whirls the woman between his legs, round his neck, and over his head in a jazz-inspired ecstasy, keeping up a frantic shaking and rhythmic movement at the same time. Which 1927 phenomenon are they describing? Uh, one of those um, black bottom big apple efforts. Isn't that it? kind of thing. One particular one I'm after, though. The. Uh, it's not a cake walk, is it? I mean, it's more like a no, cake I'm... mix, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have been so specific as to the year if it had been just something like the cake walk. It was the Lindy Hop celebrating Lindbergh's solo flight across the Atlantic. Can't give you it, I'm afraid. I thought it was a dance held in Lindy's restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the Lindbergh hop over the Atlantic. Strictly speaking, the word opera means hard work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. concept with which Dennis agrees. <laughs> We're going to hear bits of operatic arias, and I'm going to ask you for the name of the aria and the name of the opera. So we begin with David Franklin. <laughs> Mm. Carried me right away. <laughs> Almost made me forget. 
<laughs> literally made you forget. <laughs> Almost literally made me forget where I was, what I was doing, because he brought me back to Tosca. Ah, yes, one more. <laughs> Last act of Tosca. Name of the army. And I should be much happier if only I could remember what the <laughs> devil the Italian is for it. I'll give you the first word, shall yes, I? Yes, O. No, no, A. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Um, a. A luce van le stelle. Yes, that's right. <laughs> um, you're absolutely right, you and the lady in the front row. Um, no, no, she wasn't even looking at me. She was pointing to the stars, my friend. <laughs> when well, the stars were brightly shining, oh, I'll give you two there, two. Instantly, very nice. I've heard that very badly sung, and that was beautifully sung, I thought. Giuseppe De Stefano. Anyway, we move on. Aria, please, and opera for Dennis Norton. because the, I, one must apologise to music lovers be, for being philistine in this area, but there are certain arias which you can describe as light entertainment type opera in that they sort of transfer from one department of television in the BBC to the other. And this is one which you'd also do in light entertainment. You, <laughs> and this, you know, this is called Cara Nome, yes. I believe. Um, <laughs> now you want the difficult bit. Yeah. Opera, please, yes. Rigoletto. Said Ian. Yes. Said Ian. That's right. Yes. Caro nome, dear name, from Rigoletto. Sung, in case you're wondering, by Callas. Well, you're going to hear Bueling now. Anyway, Ian, I want to, from you, please, again, the title of the aria and the name of the opera. That is um, Cavalleria Rusticana Thank you for by Mascagni. I didn't ask for the composer, but you're right. Oh, didn't you? No, no. The name of the aria, please. The oh, name. the name of the aria. Now how that it, how it is familiarly known. Yes, that is um, that. No, I'm not going to waste any time on that because I don't. I really don't know. The Siciliana. Oh, Lola, fair as a smiling flower, is an alternative here. One mark out of two. Frank Mills turn. <laughs> There's a lot of writing for David. Brüderlein <laughs> und... These, these aren't your German lawyers, are they? Brüderlein <laughs> <laughs> und... Schwesterlein. Schwesterlein, thank you. Yes, one mark from... The field mouth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> all right. Thank you. Yes. Two marks. You flayed a mouse. Actually, it means the bat, but never mind. <laughs> uh, looking at the score for the moment, Ian Wallace and Dennis Norton leading by one single mark. <laughs> film music. The name of the film, please, and the name of a couple of its leading stars. David, for all you're not a film fan, try this one unaided. <laughs> Right, then try it, I did. <laughs> no, 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 Frank, no, no I don't at all. No, can you help him, Frank? No, 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 no. Oh, it's, 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 it's a lot, hard day's night. That's right. Hard day's night, Ringo, Paul, John, and the other one. Oh, yes. And the, the insects. Insects. You've got it between you. The film, A Hard Day's Night, and a couple of the stars, a couple of the Beatles. All right, then three marks there. Then it's the film, please, and its stars. <laughs> Seen our 
Yeah, the name of the film then. <clears throat> ah, no, it's been in two films. It was in a version of Tonight at 8.30 called Meet Me Tonight with Ted Ray. Uh, Ted Ray and Kay Walsh mm -hmm. sang it. Yes. Um, yeah. I think much better than anybody else. And it's also sort of recreated in Star. Um, with? We, we, well, we, with, um, what's her name? Julie Andrews. Yes. Um, and Daniel Massey doing the Noel Town. Yes, you certainly have three, uh, three marks there. <laughs> Ian, you try this one unaided. Film and stars, please. Well, the tune is the Continental. Yes. Which places it just a, just a touch before the war. Mm, yes, the title mm. of the film, then. Um, it might be... Um, Gay Divorce. Gay Divorce yeah. is Gay right. Divorce, Fred Astaire. And? And Miss Ginger Rogers. Ginger Rogers, yes. That's lovely. The, the song, incidentally, was not in the stage version, and it was the first ever song to win an Oscar for a film song, Continental. Just for instance, you have three marks out of three. You know, I happen to know all that. I saw it on television recently. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> and, Frank, for you, a film. Tim to think of me, Bob, uh, do flagellation. It's, uh, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, that song about the enormously long word for Mary Poppins. Yeah, I can never whip up any enthusiasm for that. No. Um, it's yes. with, uh, but with uh, back, back again to uh, the. Uh, Ubiquitous Julie Andrews. Yes, and? And it had um, David Tomlinson. And it had uh, Dick Van Dyke. Right, lovely, thank you. Yes, you have. And it had. Um, and you have three marks. <laughs> it's set up on. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Sullivan and Gilbert. Mm. I thought I'd put them that way around just to strike a blow for the supremacy of the composer for once. David, which was the first successful opera on which they collaborated? And for a second mark, who was responsible for bringing Gilbert and Sullivan together? Um, well, it was the merciful hand of Providence. <laughs> <laughs> it brought them together. What a lovely answer for a mark. The yes. part of the merciful hand of Providence was played by Dolly Cart. Yes. Yes, Richard. The first opera on which they worked, <coughs> it was Trial by Jury, my lad. Trial by Jury, my lad. I'll marry her myself. Two marks for you, yes. Very good. <laughs> Dennis, um, at one stage, Sullivan wrote to Gilbert, telling him that he couldn't possibly set to music any more what he called supernatural and topsy-turvy libretti. Gilbert thereupon wrote what was to prove their greatest success. What was it, and when was it first produced? Mm. Well, I'd, I'd, I'd guess. What would you say the most successful? Uh, you know, I'm uh, just assuming assume you don't know the. Yes, I mean, I don't. I haven't got a ready answer no, for this. No, no, no. Uh, I, I, you know, I got um, a stammering, mm. uh, hopeful Mikado. Yes, yes. And the most certainly yeah. the most successful ever since, in the sense of multiple productions yes. since this yes. day. Well, that's one mark. When was it first produced? The year, please. Mm. Uh, <laughs> 18. Yes. 18. Yes. Four. <laughs> Five. You're in the year. <laughs> if I'd said 18, 15, you'd believe it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Yes. Uh, Ian, your turn. Uh, they wrote uh, a work together which opened in 1892 and ran for 245 performances, which is a lot of performances. But... From that time, right up till the 1960s, it was never performed again except by amateurs. What was it called? Um, would that be, by any chance, Utopia Limited? It would for two marks. Well, well, you. Yes, very good. <laughs> I gather a very expensive and extravagant uh, show to put on. Frank, Sullivan never really liked writing operettas. Which he did it. Which he thought of as... <laughs> exactly, which he thought of as flippant and almost unworthy of him. Yet, in 1876, he composed just about the most popular drawing-room ballad of the century. What was it, and how do the words begin? 
only know one other. We seated one day at the organ. I was weary and ill at ease. Do that while more. my fingers <laughs> wandered idly over. What? Uh, how, <laughs> One over the is, filthy they, keys. Yes. Over the, and the what title, the please. Title of the song. The, the Lost Chord. That's your other Never part. since been found. <laughs> <laughs> Such it is well. We come now to the last round of the last show in this series of My Music. A sad moment indeed. Graham Daly will play tunes on a variety of instruments and we ask the members of the teams to carry on where he leaves off for three marks. First song for David Franklin. <laughs> Like a bee between, but what has been is past forgetting. Sweet memory, sweet 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 melody. Very low, isn't it? (laughs) Words are the cry in my heart will never die. Just the echo of of a sigh. Charme. (laughs) Charmaine is right. Three marks for Benjamin Franklin. (laughs) Three marks there, and a song for Dennis. Ian Wallace, your tune. May I find there are hearts more kind than I left behind. And so I go to fight a savage foe, although I know I'll sometimes be missed by the girls I've kissed. <laughs> 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 performance full of grit. <laughs> <laughs> Three marks and a song, you might even be able to guess which, for Frank Muir and the rest of us, Frank. My music will not be forgot as far as you're concerned. We have every intention of being back with you again soon. Meanwhile, the winners this final week by a margin of one single mark are Ian Wallace and Dennis Norton. Goodbye. Taking part in my music were David Franklin, Frank Muir, Dennis Norton and Ian Wallace. Graham Daly was at the keyboard and the chairman was Steve Race. Questions were compiled by Edward J. Mason, and the program was produced in London by Tony Schreier.